Hey guys, Chris here. This is video four of five, where we'll be getting into models um, and configuration class creation. So, to start off, uh, we need a database to work with. So, I'm going to create a class called database. We'll just leave it in the classes directory for now. You could go classes, and then a database directory, and then the database PHP, but for now I'm, I'm throwing it into the main classes. Alright, so this class database, this is going to be a singleton and it's going to manage our PDO object. So to start, let's go ahead and create some properties. I'm going to create the private username, uh, private password, uh, private uh, DSN, and I'm going to make a public database which is going to store our PDO object and I'm also going to create a public errors uh, variable or property which is going to hold any kind of exception that we might get. Uh, also uh, I'm going to create a private static database instance property. I'm going to set this to null. You could go ahead and up, uh, up here just make everything null if you like. Uh, I'll just do that really quickly. Um, now right away I know I'm not going to want to hard code these values into this uh, class. So, um, what I want to do is I want to create some sort of configuration class to manage that for me. And yes, I will be using a global uh, configs array. Uh, Technically, by using a singleton anyhow, you're introducing global state into an application. I could uh, create a registry and handle all of that that way. But for now, uh, just to get through this exercise quickly, we'll just be doing this. Um, all right, so in our config directory, let me create a new class called config. And it's going to be in the app config pa uh, namespace. So I have my class config, uh, and this is just going to have a public static function called get, and we're going to accept one argument here, and so uh, get is going to be passing a path uh, with uh, you know forward slash delimiter, uh, or if you want to use dot. Uh, so MySQL dot database would, you know, it would search the global array for the database key. Uh, first the MySQL key and then the child key database in MySQL. Uh, this is the Laravel style. Uh, I'm going to be using forward slashes. So okay, so we have paths equals explode. Uh, well first Let's do a uh, check. So if path, then let's do stuff. If not, then let's throw a new exception or return an exception. If you like, return new uh, exception, uh, and then you know this or config duration path not set. Okay. So now let's do a paths equals explode and let's explode the forward slash from path. Anyway, so we'll do a for each paths as bit through here. Oh, this is what I need. So config is equal to config, I'm sorry, globals. Okay, so this will be our default config value and in this uh, iteration. So we're going to do a check. So if is set config bit then now we're going to redefine config and we're going to set it to the bit. And this is going to keep nesting and going through and because to use this get we're only expecting one key to that we're going to find. And so when we're done we're going to return config. I hope this makes sense so far. Um, all right. Um, okay, so config, config, return config. So far, so good. Why don't we give this thing a test? So let's do globals config equals array. And I'm going 
to set my MySQL key and then nest an array within it. I'm going to set database to YouTube and then I'm going to go down here and that uh, instruction and um, instantiate our class, our config class. So I'm going to just put config equals new config get and I'm looking for MySQL database. Uh, actually, this is a private static function, so I don't need the new keyword. Um, good here. Now, so we want to echo config since it's only it should only return one value. We could check to see if it is an entire array. So if I didn't have this forward slash here, it would not be able to echo because it would return the entire array. Um, so I could do if you know some sort of introspection on this value if I like but anyways uh, we know we're looking for a single value here let's not get carried away um, I'm just gonna echo it I'm gonna remove the namespace so we're this class reads as the, in the uh, global or root namespace so as you can see it returned YouTube and that's perfect I'm gonna create a username uh, value in this global and just call it uh, Chris and we'll just see that it still only returns YouTube and make sure that it's not just returning the first key or whatever but we know it wouldn't and there's Chris okay so we know that this is a reliable class and that we can set up our configuration and we're happy in the index.php file I've already set up my database uh, globals config and there it is so that's great. So we could start now and uh, we could start assigning uh, the values to our database from our config. But first, let's t instruct this class to use the config. So use uh, app config config. All right. So we know to use this class, hopefully. And da -da -da -da. Okay, so I didn't, I remember I removed the namespace for that quick test. All right, this should be working now. All right, good. And now we'll do a config get, and I'm looking for username. So I go MySQL username, uh, password here, config get MySQL, password, good. And now I need my DSN, and I am hard coding some of it here, such as host. I could put a host value in my specification here, and I will, and I'm just going to set it to localhost, and that's fine. I'll go back to my database and I'll restructure this. So MySQL host equals this, and then we'll do a config get, and we'll do a MySQL forward slash host, and then uh, I need to end this instruction and now we're looking for a database name and we'll do a config get mysql forward slash database and this should be great uh, and work fine let me just do the concatenation operator there and now we're good so what we also want to do here is we need to set our database or errors value depending on uh, what happens when we instantiate this object so Really quickly, I'm going to be setting PDO's uh, attribute error mode. Uh, oops, PDO. Let's set the error mode here to uh, PDO exception. Uh, I, I, we want an exception just in case, uh, so we can uh, do some sort of uh, introspection. If there is an error, and uh, deal with it, however application sees fit. So uh, if there is a PDO exception, no, we're not going to return it. We're actually just going to set this errors equal to this PDO exception object. And this uh, database will be equal to new PDO and this uh, DSN, this username, this password. All right, that looks good. Okay, so far so good. Now, we need a public static function uh, called connect. And this is how we're going to be uh, 
actually instantiating the object with this function. And we'll do a little bit more introspection to see if self database instance is actually set. So if is if not is set actually in this case, we want uh, we want to make sure that it's not set. So now we can actually uh, set DB instance to something. In either case, whether it is set or it is not set, it is going to return uh, something. Either we're instantiating and returning something new, or we're returning what's already been created. So we'll just be sending this back. And that's the beauty of a singleton. So private, just to protect our singleton from clones, uh, I'm gonna set this function up. Uh, so this is to prevent cloning, and this will be to prevent unserialization of our object. So we're going to uh, disable wake up, prevent uh, unserialization. Okay, so now we should have the pieces to get uh, accessing this database from our models. So our next step is to create our base model. Okay, so base model is going to be in the app models namespace. Um, it's going to use app classes database. And this is going to be an abstract class. Okay, and we're just going to set the DB to protect it. We can always we can always make this public if we need to use it in controllers. Uh, but we're trying to keep models and database interaction into the model section of MVC. So this is why I'm protecting it to to make this more strict. So our function construct here. Um, will instantiate the uh, database. So I'm going to be setting uh, the DB property to the database connect and I'm actually going to pass it the database um, PDO object directly. So now we have one instance of PDO and only one. Uh, and it will trickle down into the other uh, models that extend. So this looks good. This should work fine. I'm going to create our home model now. Okay. So this home model is going to relate to our uh, home controller. And home model extends base model. Okay. So we can do our constructor if we need one, but you know, I, I'm not so sure that it needs one just yet. Function will be get names, and the way we'll actually access the database is by doing this db prepare and uh, starting with select all from table name, where one, and just like the function is named, that's exactly what this is going to do. It's going to get our names from our database. Here's our handle. Uh, I'm going to execute this query. Okay, so finally with our home model, uh, we'll do a if dbh row count, then we'll return uh, dbh fetch all, and if not, then we will return, return uh, new exception, and then something like, you know, uh, no records found. Or actually, it doesn't need an exception. That's that's overkill, I'd say. So, if row count, okay. So, in our actual home controller, we can do you know, like we've done here, I, I created the model um, object, I'm calling the get names function, and then what we could do is if names, then do something, right? So we can do this template 
assign uh, we can call this uh, you know whatever you like so we can just stick with the names uh, naming convention and if we're happy with that we get rid of header and we're gonna em uh, edit our template in a second here so let's go to home index.tpl we're not using header anymore so what we're gonna do is we're going to use a for each and specify which uh, array we're calling from. The key is just going to be K and the item is just going to be I. And we'll iterate over this and I'll say name and I dot name and then do a new line. Let's go back, refresh, and then here are our names from the database. Of course, you know, you can style this however you like, but that's the gist of it, guys. I hope this tutorial has been helpful, and at the bottom of the description, I'll go ahead and list all the code, or at least a link, so you can get all the code, so you don't have to type this out manually. Stay tuned for the last video, 5 of 5, where I'll, we'll go into security practices and uh, go through the whole MVC structure uh, to summarize.